Hello. Good morning. Happy Equinox. Um, Ms. Searcy and I are here to talk to you about the Equinox today, but um, we're going to make two videos. So the first one is a review for many of you. It'll be new for some of the early L. Um, and we're going to demonstrate an important concept that you need to know in order to understand what the Equinox is all about. So first we're going to go through perpendicular and oblique rays of the sun. Okay, so here I have a sphere. I hope you can tell mm. that is a sphere. It looks a little flat on the screen to me. Um, and that is here to represent um, what we know our Earth looks like. It is um, mostly pretty spherical. Mm -hmm. Those of you in Upper L know that it is technically an oblate spheroid, but in Early L we generally just stick with the old sphere. Um, and so that represents our Earth. Um, now, what our Earth does not look like, Pardon. <laughs> it definitely does not look like that uh, flat rectangle shape, does it? Not at all. Um, and, but I have these two um, objects here so because I want to demonstrate something. So let's imagine that our sun is directly overhead, just right here, okay? And those rays of the sun, uh, if our Earth were shaped like this, those rays of the sun would strike like so. And as they struck this rectangle Earth, they would be making right angles. If you did my angles lesson yesterday, you know that a right angle looks like that measuring angle. Yeah. And so um, when you, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, when you look at those rays as they strike this rectangle earth right here, they are making a right angle. So we could say that these rays are perpendicular to the surface of this flat earth. Okay, but we all know Earth is not flat. We do know that. Um, it is shaped like this sphere instead. So now I'm going to take my rays and we're going to see what happens. So as those rays come down from the sun, some of them will strike the Earth perpendicularly. And some of them will land more like over here. And some of them will land over here. So not all of them will make right angles. A few will land in such a spot where they are making a right angle. So I have a perpendicular ray here. But here, what kind of angle do I have here? Yeah, I have an obtuse angle here, I have an acute angle there. I'm just gonna call that an oblique angle. Oblique just means anything that's not either vertical or horizontal. So we have an oblique angle here and we have an oblique angle here. So many of our sun's rays are going to make those oblique angles when they hit the earth. So we're gonna call those oblique rays of the sun. So because our earth is a sphere, we get perpendicular rays and oblique rays. And which ones you experience kind of depends on where you live. So now we want to learn a little bit more about how we experience perpendicular rays and how we experience oblique rays. So we have another demonstration here and I'm going to enlist Emily to be my son. And oh, I hope this is going to show up. <laughs> Uh, so let's, yeah, that'll work. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna have our sun coming down here as a perpendicular ray. And I'm just going to trace the uh, area that is being illuminated by our perpendicular. I hope you can see that maybe if we, if we lift up now, you'll see that when I traced my perpendicular ray, it covered an area about yay big. Okay, so now let's do the same thing, but this time let's have a perpendicular, uh, an oblique ray. Would you like me oriented this way or that way? I think maybe, does that work? Yeah, sure, perfect, okay. 
So I'm gonna, once again, I'm gonna trace the area that is being illuminated. It goes way off the paper, but I'll trace as much, the, as, much as I can. Okay, there we go. So you can see now a lot more of the paper was illuminated by that oblique ray. That perpendicular ray illuminated this much. The oblique ray illuminated quite a bit more, okay? So that's an important thing we wanna, we wanna think about because with light comes something else. Heat. Heat, exactly. <laughs> okay, so let me move some things out of the way. And it's time for our impressionistic charts. Maybe I've been doing them in the wrong order all this time. Um, okay, so here we have another way to represent our Earth. And over here, we have some perpendicular rays. And take note of where they're, where they're striking on our Earth. And also take note of the amount of space that is being lit up by those perpendicular rays, that little bit right there. And then if you come over here, these rays are striking at an oblique angle. So these are our oblique rays. Take a look at where we are on the Earth with those oblique rays. And also take a look at the amount of area that is being lit up and warmed by those oblique rays. So I bet you can probably make some guesses here as to which area might get hotter. Hmm, what do you think? Uh, I think that this area is going to get hotter mm -hmm. because one, two, three, four, five. Oh, wow. Yeah, all of these rays are covering. Yeah, that's they're very space. concentrated, right? Mm -hmm. In that very small space, the same number of rays, but very, very concentrated here and a little more spread out over here. Now, when we look at this chart, again, these are impressions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> these are not exactly hard science here, but it's to give an impression. Um, here we're talking about, again, perpendicular rays. And this time we're looking at this amount of space from here to here. How many perpendicular rays do we have packed into that space? Let's see, would you like to count them? Sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 15, 14, 15, 16 yep. perpendicular rays. Yep. And then down here, if we were to measure, we would see this is the same amount of space, but now we have oblique rays. How many oblique rays can fit into the same space? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, okay. So for somebody living in this area, if they're getting all perpendicular rays, they're getting a lot more rays than if they're getting oblique rays. So twice as many, perhaps. That's hot. Which one do you think is gonna be hotter? That one, you bet. Okay. Now, here we have another view of the Earth. Here's our Earth right here, and these, bits here represent the atmosphere that surrounds the Earth. Now here we have a perpendicular ray, and it just plows right through that atmosphere to strike it up at a 90 degree angle. So it only has to pass through this much atmosphere. As it passes through the atmosphere, it's losing a little bit of heat, but this perpendicular angle only has to pass through that much atmosphere before it reaches the Earth. On the other hand, here we have an oblique angle, or an oblique uh, ray of the sun. And take a look at how much atmosphere it has to pass through in order to reach the Earth's surface. So that's going to lose more heat as it travels through that atmosphere. So by the time it reaches the Earth, it won't be quite as hot as this perpendicular angle uh, ray. I've said angle a lot when I meant Ray, I'm sorry guys. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so some things to think about with oblique and perpendicular rays. And I want you to tune in next to the story of the equinox 
so that you can hear a little bit more about how these guys help us understand the equinox. Thanks. See you soon. No. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs>